shillings for that, you know. <laughs> 18 shillings. 18 bob. <laughs> Exciting time for you young musicians, though, wasn't it, really? Well, there were was, there was so many musicians about then. I mean, uh, Adam, was, Adam was about, Adam Faith, uh, Marty Wilde. We all got down there, you know, down that two eyes. It was the place, the hub. I want to go back before then, because I know you came to the Isle of Wight as a schoolboy, and uh, you sort of loved the Isle of Wight from a young age, really, didn't you? Well, I, I'm living here now. Yeah. I mean, I've waited 50 Welcome. years. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I've waited 50 years for this. It's been a dream that's finally come true. I just love the island and the people. So I'm here. So you came to the island on holidays, went into rock and roll, so lovely times early in your life for you, wasn't it, really? Yeah, it was the bit in between. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there was a, a day when Cliff Richard, who was the sort of big pop star of the day, and he sort of headhunted you in a way, didn't he? Well, I, I'd already made a name. I, I was the first man in England to play in the UK to play um, uh, a bass guitar, you know, an electric bass guitar, and I was getting all the work. <laughs> so I, I was, when he approached me, I was more famous than him, you know. <laughs> and he offered me a job. I, at the time, it, on this uh, three-week tour, I was working for Mickey Most. And uh, Cliff sidled up to me. I mean, I'd never, see, I'd never seen a... a pink uh, jacket and pink socks and a pink tie and said excuse me are you Jack Harris I said yes he said w would you like a job with me I said no thanks I said I I'm, I'm okay I'm working with Mickey I was getting about I think it was four and a half quid a night you know that was sort of good then <laughs> anyway during the tour we used to buy the musical express and the melody maker and all those papers and I, I noticed this this kid's um record was climbing up the charts you know so I, I went back to him and said listen I think I will take that job with you I thought I'd jump on what I could and that's, that's that story you were very much sort of a focal point in the drifters as they were then because um, sort of mean and moody almost a James Dean look you had in those days didn't you well, that, yeah, so I'm told. But <laughs> what they didn't know is that I, that I had a stomach full of ulcers, you know, that accounted for the, <laughs> the frowning and the glaring. <laughs> Did you suddenly take to that? You'd sort of been playing it in, with people like Terry Dean and the Vipers. All of a sudden with Cliff Richard, who was a real big pop star, and played him shows, world tours. And uh, Was it comfortable for you? Did you sort of soon get into the swing? or? Well it, well, it was funny, really, because I swore I'd never play rock. I was a staunch jazz man, you know. Said, you'll never catch me playing rock and roll. But the pennies started coming in, John, you know. I mean, you've got to think about the pennies. So I, uh, I broke my own rules there. All of a sudden, you were all over the world. You had an American tour, you went to Australia, the Far East, every sort of major country... Cliff and the Drifters, later the Shadows, went to. So you went everywhere, really. Oh, well, I couldn't have done it otherwise. I don't think I'd have done it playing jazz. Were you excited when you went to a new country? And Because uh, you, you're a great wildlife man anyway, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, when we first went to... We, we landed in New York, talking about wildlife, and I expected to see exotic birds, and all it was sparrows and pigeons. I was a bit <laughs> choked, you know. <laughs> I thought they've got the same birds as us. You know. Oh, yeah, but I've seen some wonderful, you know, Singapore. They, they took us, um, some of the natives over there took us wild boar hunting. Well, I don't shoot things, you know, but that was an experience. We had to climb up a tree <laughs> <laughs> to get out of the way of the boar, you know, and up this tree it was full of things called bull ants crawling over you and... I think the only thing that was shot that day was a was a, a water snake or something. That this beater, we had these beaters and dogs, with, dogs with three legs, where where the boar had caught them, you know, and took the leg off, <laughs> things like that. But that was quite an experience, Singapore. But then I went to all the, went into the bush in Australia and saw budgerigars and 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 sort of parrot things flying about out there. I mean. 
you know, wild. It's something else. Everywhere you went, you were sort of mobbed by screaming girls, Cliff and the shadows as they were then. So, uh, <laughs> did you well, enjoy that? I bet you did. Well, for the first six months, yeah. Then they, it got a bit much. Then you know, I mean, they they used to come at me with scissors and. To, you know, to either to cut, because we wore ties in those days. <laughs> either to cut the tie or get some of the blonde hair that uh, I used to have. <laughs> Was Cliff a good boss? Did you like working for him, really? Yeah, he, he looked after us. I, I've got to own up there. He, he actually got us the recording contract with EMI, you know, with Nori Paramore. We, 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 we had a couple of flops first with vocals, you know, they weren't very good. And then, of course, along came Jerry Lorden with Apache. That and sort of changed everyone's life, really, because it meant that Cliff was a star. Well, he was already a star. The Shadows became a star in their own right. And everybody wanted to be a shadow, didn't they? That's right. In, I'm told in front of the mirror with a tennis racket, wasn't it, or something? <laughs> yeah. Did you practice that walk very much, or did it all come naturally, really? Well, Hank and I sort of... We... we pinched some of it off of a group called the Treniers. It's the first group I'd ever seen move, you know, what whilst playing. And it, at first, that crossover step, and to play notes, some notes across the beat, you know... It, it, they used to scream when you did that, the girls, uh, didn't they? Yeah, so <laughs> did I. <laughs> did you like, sort of... Suddenly, then, you four guys were out in front yourself, weren't you, in a way? That's right. Well, it, it was good for promoters. I mean, w when they put shows out, we were his backing band, and also a, a number one act ourselves. He, he, we closed first half, and he closed the show, you know. So many guys took up guitars because of you and Hank and, and Bruce, really, didn't they? Yes. Yes. You've met one or two since. Come on, tell me who, who was influenced by you. One or two famous ones. Well, McCartney said that he... Paul McCartney said that uh, he called me the governor. He, he said... They that reckon that song he wrote called Jet was... Well, I don't, you, is no, that right? I, I don't know, John. <laughs> I'm not going to be that flesh. But, <laughs> but it's nice that um, you sort of influenced a further generation of uh, pop stars, really, wasn't it, in a way? Yeah, but I also get the blame... Uh, from a lot of musicians' wives, when they meet me, they say, you're the one, are you? You know, because they become bass guitar, guitar widows. Because <laughs> their husband took it up watching us. So I get the blame from some of the wives still. You became a bit of a writer, too, because you wrote one or two uh, Shadows tunes, particularly Nivram's one of my favourites. Nivram, yeah, and FBI. Hank and I wrote that. That was a, a biggie. You two actually chose the name, didn't you? Yes. Shadows. Because the Drifters were an American group in a way, so you had to change, didn't you? Well, that's that, yeah. We, they sent out a court injunction, the, the Americans, and in those days we had Lambrettas, and Hank and I drove off into the countryside one day, and i never forget, it was a pub called The Eight Bells, <laughs> and we sat outside there drinking Guinness. We discovered Guinness. And we were going through all these names, the Tigers, the Lions, the Zephyrs, the Zodiacs, and I suddenly said, the Shadows. Hank said, that's it. That's it. So, so we got back on these bikes, back to London, to Marabone we lived then, we all shared a flat, and said, Cliff, yes, Cliff, Richard, and the Shadows. He said, that's it, that's it. Well, then, take it from there. Terrific. So there you are. You were thrilled in the last year or two to get a, a superb award from Fender Guitars, really, weren't you? That was a great thrill for you, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe it. It's the only one in existence for, for a bass man. The, um, I think Clapton's got one and Hank's got one and a couple of others, but it's the only bass guitar one in the world, so I'm chuffed, double chuffed. <laughs> At that sort of particular time, late 50s, early 60s, you were probably the most famous bass guitar player in the world, weren't you? You probably never thought about it, but you were certainly one of them anyway. No, I uh, didn't <laughs> think about a lot. We were a bit tired. In <laughs> um, 
and fighting off the women, of course. <laughs> Oh, that's a rough job. <laughs> I know. I hated every minute of that. <laughs> Blessed women. <laughs> was it your decision to go solo? Did you sort of have aspirations of, of having a solo career? No, well, when I'd had enough with the shadows, I thought, well, that's it. You know, I've, I'm not going to do anything. And, of course, everybody was after me because I was hot property, for want of a better word. And uh, the, the agent that took me over... Um, could see a front line man in me or they pushed me out the front I weren't too happy about that John very nervous so suddenly Jet Harris pop star and touring with some famous names Jet really didn't you? Oh yeah I mean, Little Richard Gene Vincent Sam Cooke, Brenda Lee uh, sort of early heroes of yours suddenly you were sort of playing on the same bill well, as, as a star. I know. Well, when I first met Gene Vincent, I mean, I'd been listening, because those blue caps of his were great, you know. <laughs> the, this is Now, I've started to get into rock and roll. I've left the jazz, you've noticed. Yeah, yeah I have, yeah. <laughs> and um, those, when I met Gene, I had a thousand and one questions, and I, I couldn't speak to him. You know, I, I'd stutter in, and, like I am now. And... Uh, I just couldn't ask him any questions. I wanted to know about the blue caps, but I, I went stum. <laughs> stum. When you sort of suddenly went out front, there were you on your guitar, and uh, were you a bit scared then? Were you a bit... I, yeah, I didn't like it. I'm OK now. But that was... I'd always been a team member, you know, for... with the shadows and with other... They were other screaming for you this time, weren't they? Just you on your own. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bit disturbing, but I got away with it. <laughs> but I didn't didn't enjoy it. That's the truth. You've had a an amazing life, and in part two we'll look at another part of your life. And uh, is that okay? Okay, John. See you in a minute. I should be back with Jet Harris in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Hannah I'm thrilled to say my guest today is Jed Harris, legendary guitar player, and uh, nice to see you, as always. Sorry about the jacket. You came in a lovely blue jacket today, and uh, I brought a jacket, but it doesn't match the shirt. Oh. <laughs> so, will you forgive me? Yes, of course. <laughs> we talked in the first half about Cliff and your great time with the shadows. All of a sudden, you were out in front. Um, you sort of then started to meet people like the Beatles, didn't you? Because pop music was changing jet slightly, wasn't it? The groups were coming in. That's right. I, I did their first television with them. I, I think it was called Thank You Lucky Stars. And they were on there. Tony and I were on. Tony Meehan. Because Tony Meehan also had left the shadows and you sort of formed up and you had number one hits like Diamonds, Scarlet O'Hara. So that was another good time for you, really, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Diamonds was incredible. I mean, number one for six weeks. That was another Jerry Lorden number, by the way. Did you enjoy that sort of spell when you were both teaming up? Well, I had another bloke on stage then, if you, you know, sharing the, 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 the screaming and the whatever. And it, I felt a bit more relaxed then. When the Beatles came in and you obviously were on their first telly show and uh, you worked with them once or twice, I know, did you expect them to have the impact that they were to have in pop music or not really? Yeah, I think t Tony and I realised that these guys were going to be big. I mean, we watched audience reaction and, you know, and the stuff was good, you know, as against a lot of stuff that was being released that wasn't so good at the time. <laughs> if you know what, I'm not going to mention any stuff. <laughs> but we knew they were going to be big. Yeah. Your life changed, really, through a car accident, really, didn't it? Yeah, I didn't really ask for that one. It was chauffeur-driven. And it uh, actually went into a, a Midland Red bus. And the bus was a write-off. That's how serious it was. But it, it, I was very ill after that. I, I mean, I got a head injury. And uh, I couldn't work. Billy Davis was in that with you, Billy Davis, was, yes. I was actually asleep on, on Billy's lap in the back and she broke her jaw on the back of my head and I, I took the 
It was a Humbus, one of those huge Humbers. Was it a super sniper? Was it? Huge thing. And I, the, I caught the ashtray here, you see. And that put me out of action. And you know, I had a court case going on, which I won in the end. It took three years. But the trouble was, John, I had a bank full of money, you see. Mm. And nothing to do all day. And I got a bit fond of the old vodka, you know. Looking back, was the accident the cause of your lean spell, do you think, really? Because you, you obviously had a bit of a breakdown as well, didn't you? Well, I, I just couldn't go near the stage. I, I mean, I was like this. Uh, and I just laid about doing nothing. So, which was a bit boring, I know, but that's how life goes. Then you bravely went, I think you went to Jersey for a while, and you did lots of different jobs, didn't you, just to sort of earn a crust in a way? That's right. Um, well, jobs over there. Well, in the summer, I could play, you know, yeah. in the hotel, whatever. But I was a, a hospital porter. I've picked spuds, planted spuds and gladioli. Uh, what else? I was a trawler man for a while. Uh, did you miss the pop stardom while you were doing all that, really, or did you not think about it? Did I miss it? Only sometimes. I was just getting on with life. I mean, I used to go out cockling in Jersey, and I had a deal with the publican over there. I used to spend all weekend filling a, a sweet jar full of cooked cockles. Then I'd take them into the... This publican I knew, he, he said, I, it's the best cockles he's ever tasted, mine. I, I, I put them in malt vinegar as against that insipid, uh, was it acetic? No, I don't know. No, white vinegar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he used to sell the, the cockles a scoop for 20p to the public, and he'd give me 10, you see, 10p, every scoop. So that was, <laughs> well, it was a bit of beer money. <laughs> <laughs> Then you obviously got very low, you got down to seven and a half stone and you, you were an alcoholic and you, you had awful problems and what I've, I've said to you this before and I've, I love a fighter and all of a sudden you, you decided enough was enough, didn't you? With the drinking, yeah, I mean I was very ill with it. I, I mean I'd been for many a dry up, you know, and lasted 12 months and, and gone back. But, uh, I think my body finally told me, come, now come on, this is enough, you know. And it's, I'll tell you what's going next, that's the fags. I mean, I'm I'll gasping, keep you for, up to that. <laughs> gasping for one now. And it says no smoking. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the body told me, and I've, I've gone four years now, and I'm just Wonderful. not interested in, in booze. Lovely story, Jeff. You went to Italy, didn't you, and had some... Don't tell us the long story, but you no, went to Italy. It's a long story. No, a message but came from, it from Verona, so, uh, a psychologist with a castle, an Italian castle, has got this new method. It involves you, you lay on a bed and you listen to CDs of this wonderful voice. And I still don't know how it works. It's called induction courses. And I went over there. It was, it was his gift to me for, for the music I'd supplied that he'd listened to over the years, so because it was very expensive, it was four thousand quid for the week, which I didn't pay. But uh, and you recovered. It's lovely. I, I'm here. I, I don't want to drink. I, I, you know, fizzy I'm, water. You're happy. I've got fizzy water there. No, there's no gin in it. <laughs> everybody thinks there is. It's interesting because everywhere you go in the world. They're Shadows fans, aren't they, really? Everywhere you go, people I know. know you and they know Hank. and uh, It's incredible, really. Well, I've only found out in the last four years how big the Shadows still are. I mean, on the internet, for instance, there's 1,100 pages on me alone. Is there? I couldn't believe it. I mean, we've been we've been swanning off to um, me and Bruce Welsh from the Shadows. We're we're great mates. Um, we've been swanning off to to Norway and and Paris for Shadows convention. We're getting paid for it, of course. Good. Yes. <laughs> Shadows conventions. 
and it's amazing. The the and obvi- and I still receive royalties. I think these days, whenever you hear Apache or Wonderful Land, any of the sort of intros to those records, um, it, it, there's still something special about them, really. Oh, especially that Apache. What yeah. an intro that is, yeah. That was old Hank, that was. He made that up. The exciting thing is you're back playing. You've recently made a, a superb new CD, which is getting a bit of airplay locally, which is lovely, and you're selling quite a few at gigs. So it's turned full talker for you. You're back entertaining and... Uh, that's right, and this, this is why I say, John, no way am I going to spoil it, you know, by, by drinking. And you go to gigs with Mike Berry and you sell out? We, we were sold out last weekend, actually. And in, the good news is, in the next month or two, I know you're coming to a live gig here on the island, which is exciting, and people will learn about that. So you're looking forward to making a, a rare island appearance, aren't you, really? Well, I'll do as many as people want me to do. I'm bringing Mike over and my group, the Vapiers who are my shadows, if you like. I mean, I'm allowed to say Jet Harris's shadows, but oh, I, mustn't, yeah. I mustn't say the, the shadow, Jet Harris's shadows, so that's okay. Because you've got a unique bass guitar sound, because obviously the records like Diamonds, Scarlett O'Hara, it's you playing lead, isn't it? Well, Diamonds is actual lead guitar, detuned. Uh, but in, in my act now... I use the term loosely act. Uh, <laughs> no, I play a six-string bass. It's a, a baritone bass. I play four-string bass guitar plus lead guitar. So I've got three instruments up there. It's a bit of a nuisance keep putting them on, but there you are. Behind every good man is usually a good lady, and you had a stroke of luck five years ago when you met a young lady in Bournemouth called Janet, who's... Um, been great for you and you've been great for her it's, it's a nice happy ending to the jet harris story really well we are good for each other i actually uh, when i met her was, i went to see a hank concert <laughs> in bournemouth i uh, don't ever think you saw hank marvin <laughs> no i was too busy talking to janet <laughs> does he know that yeah, yeah well oh. two or three days later he said to a friend of mine he said where was jet he said oh he was otherwise <laughs> engaged at the time because I didn't even go and say hello to him. I was too interested in Janet. <laughs> Sorry, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> but it was um, a lucky break for you then, wasn't it, really? Because with, with Janet, oh yeah. Meeting yeah. Janet. But Janet's never told me... Janet didn't tell me to stop drinking. I mean, this is five years ago. You know, she didn't nag me or anything like that. I just stopped drinking, simple as that. And she never, ever, and I wasn't playing at the time, and she's never once said to me, you should play your guitar. You know, she never bullied me or, or said, she just let me. And it, it's worked so well. We're, we're so good, we're joined at the hip. <laughs> Before you go, we must mention Wembley Stadium and the event with Cliff Richard, because that was a sort of a, a comeback for the original Shadows, if you like, and it was great, wasn't it? Well, I was doing one of my stints in Holland, and... Um, this is, this must be, te- what, what, how long, 91? Yeah. 91. It was one of my few appearances. They, they'd asked me to go to Holland, you know. And the, the phone rang. And it was Cl- Cliff's office. Would I like to play in Wembley Stadium? And I thought it was someone having me on, you know. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I'll play in Wembley Stadium, you know. Last thing in my head. But it was true, it really was his office. And that was the highlight of my life. I mean, to walk out on that sta- it was stage, it was like a... It was, it was like a, a football pitch was... <laughs> more like it, the stage was the size of a po- football pitch. When you walk out and all these people completely round you, you know, reportedly a, a hundred thousand each night, it was two nights... And the, the, these hairs on the back of the neck, they, they just stood up when Cliff announced this, you know. But what a, what a show. In a nutshell, did you think Cliff would last to 2000 as a major pop star when you first joined him? Did you think he would? Well, when it got to about 1980, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I still think he's the best one we ever had. I mean, when that movie came out, 
the record move it I thought this is it was so American mm -hmm. I thought we've run out of time Jet thank you so much for coming in it's a, a story with a happy ending you've been a great fighter you've succeeded you're great playing good music new CD lots happening good luck in the future it's a real thrill to meet you today thank you John and sit tight okay pal You've been watching Hannum TV12's original chat show. My guest today has been a legend, Jet Harris. See you soon. Bye-bye for now.